All right. So welcome to today's session. We're going to be looking a little bit closer at what it's like to use ed tech and the Zoom technology in a physical space. So the idea is that we're going to have remote students that are going to be joining through Zoom. You're going to have students that may be in a classroom. And how are you going to manage all this technology and all these different ways to communicate with students? So today is kind of just uncovering a little bit of what that's going to look like and how we can kind of progress forward. Before we really jump into it, um, I wanted to make sure everyone's hearing me okay. So if you're not hearing me, it's going to be hard to answer the question, but we can do a couple things. You'll notice that in the participants window, there are some icons that are at the bottom of your participants list. You can click yes for a yes, no for no, if you're not hearing something, I guess. <laughs> you go, are you hearing? <laughs> So if you want to give that a try, that's a, a feedback system within the system and the participants window. So I, I, would, I would have everyone kind of move their, their mouse so that they can see there's a, a, a menu that you can go to and there will be something that says participants. If you click on participants, you'll see a, a little pop up of everyone in the classroom today. And there are icons at the bottom of that list. So if you are clicking those items, you could say yes to respond to a question or no. It's a nonverbal way to communicate with you as a faculty member from the student perspective. So a lot of the time when you start a class, one of the first things you're gonna do is do a quick check, make sure everyone's somewhat in the, in the class. You can also throw out um, a, a quick message. Can everyone hear me? And what that does is you're just making sure everyone's connected. So you might use this throughout the uh, duration of your class as you're walking around. You'll have this either up on the screen, you'll have uh, that list kind of on your, on your dashboard. So you'll notice there's some other ones like go slower, go faster. So it's a good feedback system that's nonverbal for your students as you kind of look through there. And of course the chat's always really helpful because you can see any questions that kind of crop up. Just a quick idea is when you click one of those yes or no or any of those icons, after about, I believe it's 60 seconds, they're gonna just disappear. They're gonna fall off. You don't have to turn them off. So one of the first things you wanna do is you wanna kind of create some community, create some ideas behind who you're gonna be with. There's gonna be people on site. Um, there's gonna be people uh, remote. In this particular session, we're just doing it as we're all remote. So we're gonna do a quick icebreaker and go around the room if somebody has an object near them, or if they uh, want to give a quick tour of the room they're in, they can move their camera. Or if you're just on audio, you can tell us a little anecdote that you've uh, had this week. So let's start going around the room and just uh, having a quick share out so we can kind of all see what everyone's been doing. So let's start, uh, Denise, I see you're first on the list. You want to give us a quick show of, of your room or an object or something? Um, yes, uh, let me just quickly turn off my uh, virtual background and I'll show you uh, my little learning space here. Ta-da! Nice. This is a, a wire shelf. Uh, my guy uh, hung two whiteboards on there with hooks. So now I have a huge whiteboard behind me to use. Um, I have a, a desk with uh, my computer on a docking station underneath and a wireless keyboard on top and a big monitor on top of my desk. So I have a connection wire, an HDMI wire that goes from my MacBook to my um, uh, monitor so that I have a big screen. I find that when I work in Zoom, it's really hard to teach from a laptop. There's just not enough real estate for me. So that big screen uh, takes a lot of stress out of me trying to manage those different pop-up windows. Awesome. Thanks, Denise. You're welcome. It looks like uh, I have Nick. Oh, this is Renee, actually. I don't know why Nick's name came up. <laughs> Okay. I thought <laughs> apparently we share the computer. I don't, I don't know, but um, <sighs> I, my work area today is my living room. And uh, that thing that's on the back wall there 
it is really a lamp. It is not somebody's weird face looking out, which is what it kind of looks like. It's a little creepy, but, and I am definitely not uh, set up as techy as Denise. Um, so I have a long ways to go. Um, although I've been teaching all summer long over the internet, CPR and first aid over the internet, but it's pretty straightforward right off of a video so well you made it here today and you're doing great so i think you're going to learn some more as we go forward awesome thanks for joining us great looks uh karen well you can see behind me i'm in my den and right now it's packed with boxes that i'm trying to go through and get rid of things and to try to create a space a workspace that is uh better than what i had in the spring um, and I'm trying to put all my techie stuff together and trying to even figure out what techie is. So that's, see, my, there's my den. <laughs> nice. stuff. Looks like you got a lot of cool uh, media and books and things in there. And uh, I think I see even a trumpet over there. And maybe Yeah, it's yeah, it's an old one. Yep. <laughs> cool. All right. What about Lilia? Are you there with us, Lilia? Maybe not. All right, anybody else? We got Wayne and Joanna in the call as well. How about uh, Wayne? What's going on in your world over there? Well, let's see. There's my environment. <laughs> I'm in my, my wife and I share a uh, home office. Uh, let's see, here's an object. A reluctant object. <laughs> She's my Zoom star. And uh, let's see, I got, I've set up quite a bit since I, uh, since March. See, I got a MacBook, or not a MacBook, but an iMac, and I set up a little audio studio, and so I've got a streaming studio in the works. So I got my laptop and a monitor because it's always good with Zoom, as Denise said, uh, to have a second monitor for real estate. And uh, see, another object. See, I've been trying to work on this all summer, but I have not had a chance, so. <laughs> nice, doing some model work. Yeah. Thanks, Wayne. Hey, about Yana, did you want to share anything today? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, I'm, good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm sorry that I'm not in my office, so today, yeah, this morning I have to take my son to the violin lesson. So I'm actually in the car, but I really want to attend this session. I don't want to miss it. So that's why I'm not in the formal, you know, formal setting, but it's, it's very convenient. I would say the Zoom meeting, I can be anywhere. And then I, I can still be able to participate. That's a good example of how a student can join by a mobile from anywhere on Zoom. That's awesome. Thank you all for sharing. Um, if there's anybody else that wants to share, they can. It looks like uh, we kind of gone through the list. So we're going to go ahead and jump into the official session. Now, it was, I appreciate everyone sharing just to kind of show you that we all have unique environments that we're coming from. We have different things that we're surrounded by in a remote scenario. Um, some of us may have pets at foot. We only have kids in the room. We have other uh, sp a spouse or somebody kind of walking around, or maybe we're just we're you know, in a specific space. So think about that when you have remote students coming into these rooms, that they are gonna be in a various situations. And some of them may not have the visual aspect. You may not see them on camera. You may just be tuning in to listen to you, but they're gonna be there. It's always good to do some check-ins to try to make sure that everyone's there, everyone's listening as you go throughout your session there. You have to be cognizant of the remote people. When you have face-to-face, -face, it gets really easy to forget that there's a whole slew of people that are coming in here remote. So as I'm looking right now, I have a classroom that's behind me, and I'm just going to kind of show you the space I'm in. So if you kind of look around, I'm in more of like an auditorium style classroom. So my audio may have gone down a little bit because I turned the camera around so the microphone isn't facing me at this moment. So I am projecting quite loud, but just wanting to show you that I would be kind of directing a lot of my, my discussion or my lecture or my insights with the, the group uh, that's here, but I'm also gonna be looking down at this monitor 
many times. I have a monitor that's right in front of me. I'm going to kind of swing it back around so you can see me. So I am generally standing in front of a workstation at the moment. Um, I'm not going to really move the camera around too much, but what you're seeing here is a camera, web camera, that is on a flexible arm. And so we have these mounted in all the classrooms. The idea is that you walk in a classroom with a webcam already set up, so you do not have to worry about bringing a camera, turning it on, or doing any of that work. Just want to give you kind of an idea on that. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into a screen share. And we're going to continue with what we got going. One of the first things that you're going to do when you get into the room is you have to be cognizant of turning on the room. So most rooms across campus are going to have a panel that's very similar to what you're seeing. So I haven't turned it on in this room yet, so I'm going to turn that on. And what it's going to do, it's going to warm up the projector, it's going to turn on the DVD system, or not the DVD, but the, the actual projection system that you might have, if you have TVs on the wall. So those are going to start turning on for your face-to-face -face students. It's going to be important that you do that as kind of a first step, is getting your room ready. This is also going to allow you to turn, have time to turn on the computer that's in that room. The computer in these workstations is going to be the workhorse for all the Zooms, all the sharing of your documents, anything you might write and want to show to participants here or to show to participants remotely is going to be done at this workstation. So there's that camera. It does have a swivel head. You can swivel it around. You can position it as you need. One of the things to take away with, though, is it's not going to do well on a whiteboard. At this distance, like this, it's going to be hard to work on that. That's why we have the dot camera that we're going to talk about. This is an example of what this dot camera is going to look like when we start getting into that. What you're going to do is you're going to be able to put a piece of paper uh, whiteboard, any kind of uh, thing underneath this document camera, and then you'll be able to leverage it. And I'm going to kind of, I will bend it right now so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So there's my dot camera. And that's just sitting right here on the desk. So I'm going to be writing on this. And in a little bit, you're going to see what it looks like, not from this webcam angle, but actually from the camera that's inside this dot camera. So I'll bend that guy back up. One of the other things that you want to think about right, right when you get into the room, hold on just a moment, I click the, the link to the dot cam, is this is kind of a general setup of what you'd see in most scenarios. You see the camera that's behind the touch panel. You don't see a dot cam, but where those gloves are sitting is where the dot cam typically is. And then you got your computer that's going to be displaying all your Zoom information. You may have also a microphone. So we're talking about a personal PA system. So I have one of these here as an example. This is personal. It's not tied to the room. There's, uh, we're currently trying to get about 80 of these on campus, and they're going to be distributed into, to each instructor that feels that they would need this. If you talk loud, you feel like you're good, you don't have to wear it, but it's going to project your voice. It's going to amplify your voice in the room. So one of the first things that you would want to do is to get ready to teach Zoom in the classroom is you have to create a Zoom meeting. Now, if you've done Zoom 101, you'll already know how to do this. I'm not going to go through the basics of Zoom right now. Take our Zoom 101 class if you need that insight. You're going to create your meeting. You're going to copy your invite. And you're going to place it in the Blackboard. You want this to be in the Blackboard course. Your Blackboard course is your touch point for your remote students, your in-class students, and it's also the way to always have your uh, links available. We're currently working on integrating Zoom into the classroom or into our Blackboard to where you can create the meetings in Blackboard and your recordings will show up in Blackboard. Those recordings will have uh, about a 15-day duration before they'd expire. So during that time, students can watch the lecture, they can download the lecture, you can download the lecture, but after 15 days, it does have to go away because we don't have enough space to continually hold all the classes that are gonna be recorded. 
So you want to get your software tools ready on your computer. So I got here 15 minutes before the session started to be able to do a lot of this. So these are just examples of things that you can share. Your Nearpods, your Google Slide, your PowerPoints, PDFs, documents, programs, websites, pretty much anything you can bring up on the screen, you can share. So think about that. What needs to be on the screen is what you're going to be showing that the remote students. One of the things that I should do and what you should really think about before you start your Zoom, we're going to jump into like what you do when you get into the Zoom, is you want to start looking at your environment and making sure you have adequate lighting. I purposely not turned on the lights just so you could see what it looks like under bad lighting. If I turn these on, it might increase the, the, the vis visibility of me a little bit. So there is lighting that's in the ceiling that's above me that's going to light me a little bit better. So you want to make sure is if you can is get enough light coming towards you um, and positioning yourself that you can be seen if you're going to be demonstrating anything or really kind of have any objects in your hands. So let's just act as though we've now gotten into Zoom. What are the things that you need to think about when you get to Zoom in the classroom? In the lower left hand corner, we've already can do this. You can look at your current versions of Zoom to see this is that there's gonna be your audio menu and there's a little up arrow that you can click and it's gonna look at list all your audio devices. You're kind of having to troubleshoot. You're gonna to have to be a little bit more nimble at using technology because there's gonna be a lot of devices in there that are listed. Now you're gonna to wanna to make sure your microphone is the Logitech C930 or it's gonna say, um, or actually in, our, in this case, in these rooms, it says FHD. And that is going to be an audio device that you'd select so that you can hear me. It's a microphone. Additionally, you can go to your video settings and you can check all your various video settings. One of the ones that's really important to know about is mirroring your video. So what mirroring your video does is it makes it look like you're looking into a mirror. So when you look at your screen, your video is flipped. Now that's kind of helpful for you as you look at yourself. But to the participants, it's the normal way. It looks just normal. The one thing that's a caveat, though, is if you're using the dot camera, when you're writing in the room, you want the, the, the participants that are in the room to see your dot camera up on the screen. To be able to do that, you want to not have your video mirrored. And I'll show you that in a little bit here. Participants, <laughs> as you move through here, your participants are gonna be who you bring into there. So as you were coming into the call, I had a waiting room set up. So that waiting room was allowing me to uh, admit you as you come in. It's like a privacy kind of thing. So you're gonna to have to be cognizant of that. You either have a password set up or a waiting room. And I would, what I would do is I would wait till a specific time and then start allowing people into the room. And then finally, you want to get ready to record. Recording is the step that you're going to want to kick off right before. So everything I've talked to up to this point is just getting you prepped to start the class. So there is a little bit more that you would do to get into the class. But the recording step, when you click on recording, you do have a couple options. We are looking at the recording in Blackboard. So we will be looking at how that's integrated. But one of the other things you can do is you can adjust where your recording is saved. So I have a jump drive that's plugged into the computer right now, and this recording is being saved to my computer locally. And then finally, this is just an example of what it looks like when you're admitting people. In this upper right-hand corner, you can see that there's a person waiting. If you highlight their name, it would say admit that person. You can admit them to the class, and you can admit all the class at one time. You'd see a lot of people start showing up and you'd be able to admit them to the class. And then just like I had just discussed before, once they're in there, you can use those tools to kind of non-verbally communicate. And that's a perspective of what it looks like from uh, Denise's perspective. So let's do a poll. Polling is one of the tools that you can use within Zoom. So let's just say that you've gotten into the class, you've done all the stuff that we've just talked about. The first thing that you need to really start doing then is, is presenting to your class. Start having an introduction. Start having some discussions with the remote students, with the in-place students, 
kind of start your lesson as you normally would. Now there's some additional tools that you can leverage. Now this particular tool, polling, is going to be interesting because you can use it in Zoom, but for the participants in the room to use it, they would also have to be in Zoom. So they could potentially be bringing in their devices, jumping into the Zoom, and then participating in the poll. So let's go ahead and do a poll now. Is everyone seeing a poll? I see it up. All right. So what we're doing is we're capturing live data in a poll. It looks like we got four out of six votes. It tells me that the votes are happening. Got one more vote out there, maybe. I'm gonna end the poll in 30 seconds, okay. We got as many as are gonna get it. So what I can do is I can share the results. So you should be seeing the poll results at the moment. So it looks like we have a few that feel ready and a few that really wanna continue with this development. So I appreciate you being here today. I hopefully we can answer those questions. And if not, there's gonna be ample opportunity for us to help and answer more questions. So polling is a great way to just check the temperature of the room, kind of figure out the knowledge that people know. Now this is polling in Zoom. There's a lot more engagement options out there. Uh, Denise can definitely spout off a lot about Nearpod and the engagement opportunities and that you can do in some of the slide deck and presentation software that, that is out there. But if we're talking strictly Zoom, this might be something that you can do right there in class. So when we talk about sharing a screen, that's what we're doing right now. This is gonna be one of the key things to being able to show your remote students any presentation material that you have, as well as your, your people that are um, in the classroom. So you're leveraging this computer. Like I said, this is the workhorse of being able to connect everyone. It's the one place that we converge so that remote and in face-to-face -face students can uh, be able to see everything that's happening. So you're gonna be sharing your screen through Zoom. One of the things that you'll see right now, I'm gonna kind of adjust my camera, is in the classroom up on this board right here is I'm projecting Zoom in the classroom. So it, it's probably a little unclear to you, but the entire room is seeing what we're seeing right now remotely. And they see you too. Your cameras are right here. So if you have your camera on, you're gonna be also showing everyone that's in the classroom. So when you click on that share button, you're gonna have a lot of options. So some of the options are, you can go to just sharing a screen, you can create a whiteboard, or you can share individual specific applications that are open. So let's just say you had a web browser open. You can just say only share that web browser, but not my desktop. So it really keeps kind of a privacy, so nobody's seeing what icons on your desktop, but they're really just seeing that browser window. Honestly, I feel that's more for like a, a little bit more advanced users. So that's something that you wanna practice with, with that share. I typically just do that first screen and share the whole screen. And then another thing that you can do once you start sharing is allow people to annotate on the screen. So one of the things I'd like to do right now is let's do, um, let's do an anna annotation session. We're gonna jump in and I'm gonna share a whiteboard. So everyone should have a little window and I can't remember exactly what it says, but you'll like view options or view details. You'll highlight it either at the top or the bottom of your screen. And it's gonna allow you to annotate on the screen. You should be able to click the draw. All right, looks like a few people are finding it. If you're not finding it, what it typically is, it's it, this is just a whiteboard right now, so you could potentially just start with a, a blank canvas, or you could go ahead and bring uh, annotation up over a shared document. People could start highlighting areas, circling things. You could bring up a picture and start labeling aspects of that picture. There's a lot of ways that you could use just this annotation tool to be able to get some uh, great concepts out there. There's also some additional tools that you'll find helpful in there, like uh, 
spotlight tool. Just so you can really see what's going on, where I'm pointing. And then you can also save these drawings. You can clear them or you can save them. So can I go. offer a quick, easy strategy? Yeah. You guys could um, make a chart in a, on a PowerPoint slide and have students type um, information in charts to categorize it, or you could do matching, like a term or a concept to a definition and have them draw their lines to match them up. Those are two really easy engagement pieces uh, for students on the whiteboard. Thanks, Denise. So one of the last things that we're gonna really kind of play with today is the concept of using uh, breakout rooms. So breakout rooms are a way to separate the classroom into little chunks. So right now, let me see how many we have in the call. Looks like we have seven participants right now. So what we could do is we can break this room apart into little subgroups, have some, uh, some work going on, have some very specific kind of uh, activities designed. So you can have these activities in separate groups and then bring everyone back together. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try what a, a breakout room looks like. So what we're gonna do is, I want everyone to just take a quick peek on here. There's gonna be two breakout rooms. One breakout room, if, you're, if you find yourself in breakout room one, you're gonna discuss challenges that students will face attending remote sessions. And the other one I should have said, discuss challenges that faculty will face um, giving those remote sessions. So I should have said, instead of attending, it should say giving those sessions. But we're gonna go ahead and, and we're gonna split this group up. We're gonna have about five to 10 minutes to discuss in a group what those challenges are for students in remote sessions and challenges for faculty. So if you're in group one, students, group two, faculty. Everyone got that? All right, we're gonna set up these rooms. So what I'm doing behind the scenes that you can't see is I'm setting up the breakout room. There is a button that I click and it's gonna bring up a screen that allows me to set this up. You're gonna have a 30 second timer when it's time that everyone comes back into the group. I'm gonna auto generate these rooms. And here we go. In 10 minutes, we'll be back. So room one is gonna be Denise, Karen, and <laughs> Nick. <laughs> <laughs> so you will be discussing student challenges. Breakout room two will be, uh, looks like Wayne, Joanna, and Baja. All right, let's go. host of the meeting you're a, you'll see a, a tool at the bottom that says breakout rooms oh okay. hey adam so I'm and just, um as a host i can pop around and i can jump in and check on on you guys to see how things are going so i just wanted to say hey and uh this thank you was definitely <laughs> that so all right <laughs> um, yeah so uh with the breakouts you can set them ahead Yeah, because this is mean that we can use it from the university. Maybe we have enough bandwidth, but if we decided to use it from home and we have large number of students need to join, uh, especially with the video uh, session. So sometimes there is some problem with the bandwidth. So this is something that we need to consider. I just wanted to jump in. This is Adam. I'm jumping into the call. I just want to let you know as an instructor, you can jump and bounce between various breakout rooms. So I just yeah. wanted to say hi, make sure everything's going well in this room. Good. All yeah, right. Adam. I'll see you guys in a little bit when you get pulled back together. Yeah.
It looks like everyone's coming back into the session. Hopefully you had some decent discussions in those uh, breakout rooms to get an idea of kind of what it might be like as students to separate and to do separate sections. So we had two groups. Let's just spend a minute or two to uh, do a quick report out of what we uh, discussed. So let's start with group two this time. Somebody from group two, you wanna talk about what it's like, um, some of the challenges from teaching in a remote session. Anybody well, I, I, I took some notes and uh, one of the concerns was connectivity. Uh, mm -hmm. Some people at their homes are not gonna have as good of a uh, connect, internet connection as they do at the university. Uh, that is a legit concern, of course. Um, my best advice would be to avoid Wi-Fi at home if you can. Uh, but yeah, that is a concern. Another concern was uh, teaching in a consistent environment. Um, uh, the multitasking is a concern, uh, getting a handle on the technology while at the same time teaching both a in-person cohort and a Zoom cohort. cohort. Um, some people would rather just do one or the other and they're kind of concerns with the uh, hybrid uh, high flex model. And, and also concerns with uh, giving person-to-person uh, -person help while trying to maintain social distancing. Um, she had a concern that uh, she might not be able to go up and help uh, sit next to the person and help through a problem. So uh, all these are going to be challenges and uh, you know, things we're going to have to address. Those are some very, uh, very good concerns and things that we've definitely heard. Um, I don't necessarily have answers to all those. I, I know that the connectivity piece on site, we should be fine. We have been offering hotspots to students that are from Verizon. Uh, you can join Zoom from a, just a landline phone. You do not have to have a computer connection. So if you have a phone, at the very minimum, you can have an audio connection in these environments. Um, I got to agree with you that teaching consistently is going to be a tough one. Um, at the very minimum, if you feel that multitasking is too overwhelming, there may be some models where you're able to at least just record a session or just broadcast it one way, as long as you're at least answering questions in the chat. Well, thank you for that, that report out. What about the student group? What are some of the challenges for students? Um, we came up with um, uh, maybe not having a webcam on their device would make them feel a little disconnected in their group. Um, we talked about, uh, we spent a good minute talking about how to work breakout rooms too. I'll, I'll just share that. Um, that was an interest of, of interest. Um, but uh, uh, we just thought that, you know, students who didn't have a webcam on their, on their computer might feel a little left out in breakout rooms. So we talked about how they could log in on their phone or, you know, at least they had audio and they could be connected that way. Is that accurate, my friends? Yep. Okay, yep. thank you. Yep. That's good. Well, that's some good feedback. And it's, uh, it's the questions that have been asked up to this point. So with continuing on with the technology, the thing that we really want to talk about next is the dot cam. So there's a lot of times that you just want to write on a whiteboard. Or you want to write on a chalkboard or have some sort of experience. We looked at annotation. Annotation was okay in Zoom but it does lack a certain kind of one-to-one -one feeling of holding a pen or a marker or something in your hand. So we really wanted to create that experience as closely as we possibly could. So what I'm gonna do um, at the moment right now is I'm gonna share my uh, document camera. So what you're gonna have to do is, depending on what you're seeing right now, um, you may have to do a, a few things to get this to stick on your screen. So if you see me, you want to, on this screen, if you uh, right click on my video, and this is the things that students could choose to do, you would right click on my video and you would pin the video. So what that does is you're pinning me so it's full screen at this point. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch to my document camera. So I'm actually just hitting this little arrow that's by the video camera and switching to another input. Let me do that now.
Okay, so what you should be seeing is a piece of paper. Everyone seeing that? Get some thumbs up there so you can see my hand right here. So in the room, I'm also projecting this. So you wouldn't be able to necessarily see this, but in the room, I, and when I cut back, you'll kind of see in a second. So with the dot cam, it's just as easy as this. You're gonna be using this sheet of paper to be able to write. You can adjust this arm that's on the dot cam if you need to go closer, if you need to pull out, there's some focus buttons on it as well. So I just have a very small sheet of paper, but not only can you do uh, dot cam things or, or on paper, you can show objects. And again, you, you may have to hit the focus buttons on the, on the machine to be able to focus in on objects. Here's an example of our wireless PA system. So kind of adjust that up, being able to show off some of the pieces of what that would look like. So the dot cam is made for 3D objects as much as it is for being able to write directly on a sheet of paper or a whiteboard. And as a little flexible arm, they'll allow you to do what you need to do. And of course, anybody can kind of see it as you go here. And then what I could do later, if I would really like, is I have all my notes, I could scan those in or do some additional work. Typically, when you're using this, it's because you need to be, do an equation or do something that's really difficult to emulate when you have uh, just a regular webcam. And uh, Wayne Todd, <laughs> thank you for that uh, insight. So on my end here, I'm going to, I'm going to switch. Um, let me see how I can do this. You won't be able to see it because you can, I can only really show you this, this dot cam, but if I flipped it around, like mirrored it, uh, that's a typical issue. What I want everyone to do right now is if you move your mouse on your screen, go down to the menu structure at the bottom, you'll notice it shows your little video camera. And if you hit that up arrow, that's just to the right of that video camera button you can go to something that says video settings. Inside of the video settings, it's gonna open up a, a pop-up panel. Notice that on the right-hand side, there is a checkbox that says mirror my video. You will wanna turn that off. That's gonna be the best case scenario for being able to leverage a dot cam inside the classroom. So what you're seeing right now on the screen is also big on the screen here in the classroom. So everyone is able to see this. When I jump back, I'm back on camera and I'm able to continue with whatever I need to do. So you're gonna be able to jump in between those environments. You're not stuck in just one or the other. So that is with the dot cam. One of the final things I wanted to show you is streaming video. You can stream video through Zoom to a certain degree. So we're just gonna watch a little tiny click of this particular video to see how well you can experience a video clip. Together, we can push the boundaries of what's possible. Let's ignite innovative thinking. Let me know if you're seeing it. Perspectives and passionate teamwork. When I was seven years old and my sister was just five years old, we were playing on top of the
I'm, so did we lose audio halfway through that? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I, I thought that might be the case. What I did is I muted my mic. I just needed to double check on that one. So you did have to unmute your mic for that to, to continue going forward. But what I was trying to demonstrate in that particular moment is that I had a YouTube video embedded into my slide deck. But for the, the most part is I, it looks like you're going to have to not mute that video. So you should be able to hear it if I hit play now. Everyone pushing her out of the way of an oncoming imaginary sniper bullet. Everyone hearing that? Yes. Okay. So integrating these videos in here. Now there's always this idea of copyright and how does this streaming maybe circumvent or create some issues there. Uh, that's always a big gray area. Up to this point, if you're sharing certain clips and you're doing things in the classroom, I think there's uh, a lot of specific copyright law that you could write through and say it's probably okay. As long as you're not fooling, just showing full movies and have nothing that ties back to your instruction, then I think you could be definitely um, argue that you're doing it from a teaching perspective. So I have not tried this with all video platforms. I've done it with YouTube and some of the web-based video platforms, but up to this point, we've been able to share web-based videos through streaming. So that kind of concludes the basics of the classroom setup, but I wanted to open it for questions now. I wanted to understand what other kind of concerns might be out there. What are the things that I maybe touched on in not enough detail or, or what, what do you think? A lot of information all at once. There's a lot there, yep. So with this information, think about it as here is a lot of things that you could do. You're not going to do them all. You're going to be able to pick out the ones that most make sense. So for you, it might be that you just need to get into a Zoom if you're doing it in class and at very minimum just broadcast it and look at chat. That might be the first step to you bringing Zoom in the classroom. So if you look at our counterparts at Fort Collins, for instance, they're using a platform that essentially records the lecture material or the in-class kind of scenario so that the remote users can then uh, watch what happened in the classroom. Now, you would want to really look towards some of the other sessions that we have on how to uh, put a lot of this together. So Denise, for instance, has her course on teaching and learning that's going to be really helpful on how to build a class where you might not necessarily need to record or have Zoom in the classroom. There are some ways that you can kind of build this out that are a little bit more simple. Is there any other uh, kind of insights or questions along those lines? So Adam, we have uh, Zoom on all the classroom now. Uh, can you repeat that first part again one more time? So, so Zoom now available on all, all computers, on the labs, on the classrooms? So, so it's only available it? right now in the professor workstations. The labs themselves, they can easily join a Zoom. You just wouldn't have a, like a microphone. You wouldn't even want to turn on the microphone or the video. Some of the labs do have um, a video on them. But it really, you just need a device to enter in there. So if you were in a lab, for instance, and yeah. you wanted somebody to share their screen through Zoom, you could do that. I don't know if that answers the question. Yes, this is important for me because sometimes I need to come close to the students to help them. But in this way, I, they can share their screen with me so that no need to go close to them. So how that would work is it, you could do a, a couple different scenarios. Um, mm -hmm. Depending on the size of the room, you could put everyone in their own breakout room, so to speak, and then you can have one-on-ones with students. Um, mm -hmm. Would be anybody be willing to share their screen at the moment? Uh, what, I, what I need somebody to do is just highlight the, the bottom of their screen, and there's a share screen button. Uh, maybe Karen's looking like she's looking for it. If uh, you click share screen. Don't have one of those at the bottom. Okay, it would be in the middle. It's like a green button. Okay, green button. 
Yeah, click that and then a window will pop up. Go ahead and just hit OK on whatever you just, uh, whatever it's highlighting. So Karen is sharing her screen at the moment. It's going to come on in just a second. It looks like there's Zoom on there. So Karen, if you want to go to an another tab or something, like go to one of the CSU Pueblo Summer 2020 tabs or something okay. on your computer. So this is an example of you as, a, as like, let's say a student could share your screen and now everyone in the classroom here, everyone uh, remotely is seeing Karen's screen. So this is just an example of anybody out of the entire group that's in the call can share. So this is really good for report outs for students. If you have kind of a round robin of, of presentations, things like that, they do have the ability to share out from their locations. Are you seeing my, my, my Outlook web app? That's where we're seeing, we're seeing okay. your Outlook. So at the very, uh, it's either at the top or the bottom, it kind of depends on where it might be. There should be this little red button that says stop sharing. Okay, yep. And if you click it, then it cuts you back out from sharing and now we're back in the Zoom call. Anybody else wanna try a share screen? Will I have the opportunity? Okay, well, at this point, um, I'm gonna be sending an email to everyone that's gonna have some information that you can report back on this session. I appreciate everyone's presentation or uh, participation today. Is that if there's any additional questions, uh, you will also be enrolled in the Blackboard Professional Development course that will have the ability to chat with other instructors, other faculty members on this. You can always email myself, you can email Denise or Wayne. We're all available here to help you kind of get through this. I understand it's a lot to absorb. It's a huge change for kind of everything. We've tried to make it as simple as possible. If you don't have a Zoom account, you're going to need to get a Zoom account and you can do that through our help desk. So let me just throw this information on the screen so you can kind of see that. So you can see down there, it's a 549-2002, or if you go to csupueblo.edu slash IT, that will take you to our ticketing system where you can request a Zoom account. Wayne here in the call is actually our administrator of Zoom that would help get you into those accounts. So Adam, I have a question. Yes. I already have my own Zoom account because I use it for my other business that I do. Can I just use that one? Yeah, I don't see a problem with it per se, but the only difference is, is that CSU Pueblo Zoom does have some additional features because it's enterprise grade. So for instance, when you send out the, uh, when we integrate with Blackboard, you're gonna, you would have to use one of our accounts to integrate to Blackboard. Or okay. when we, um, are sending out links it does say csu pueblo in the link title so it's okay. uh, so it really brands it as a csu pueblo official kind of link one of the things i would say is it's you should get a an official csu pueblo account from a security standpoint there's been a lot of things that you may have heard in the news about zoom and the security implications of it They've definitely tightened down a lot of things. One of the specifics though that they're worried about is some people just jump in Zoom calls and they do what's called a Zoom bombing or they, they, they an uninvited guest comes in and puts something inappropriate on share screen and, and, and jumps out. Or, you know, there's, there's some other implications there. So we really wanted to try to keep it within our uh, CSU Pueblo Zoom. I don't see there being any issues if you were just doing kind of quick one-offs or office hours or something like that, it would probably work. Did you okay. use your uh, university email to set up that Zoom? Uh, actually, I think I did. Okay, I, if that- I did it last spring. Yeah, if that's the case, if you want to get it into our Zoom ecosystem, you'd have to decouple your, you'd have to call Zoom support to decouple that account so we can associate it into our uh, Zoom instance. Okay. We, we can help walk you through that too. So if that's something that you're looking to do, I know that, uh, did you pay for that account or is it just a free tier? I, I do, because it's it's uh, my own private business that I, I teach out of. Yeah, because what you might be able to do is, is just change the email associated with that Zoom account mm -hmm. to another like personal email and sure. then you, so that that might be an option something we'd want to look at okay sure all thank right you. well thank you all for attending today if there's again any other questions give us a call thank you adam no problem thank you have you. a great one
You too.